Has anyone got a new bike lately and found that their electronic gears on that bike just don't work? Well, they do work, just not quite how you're used to. In fact, they seem to have a mind of their own and you don't seem to have much control of them at all. They change from the big to the small ring without you asking. They even change between the sprockets on the back without you asking. What is going on? Well, it's probably not news to you, but you have Shimano Di2 Synchro Shift gears. And I'll be honest, I've been in this exact position before. I wasn't the biggest fan of them at first, but I have really come round to them. So I thought it's about time we did an explainer. <laughs> So back in 2016, Shimano released their Dura Ace R9150 group set with synchronized shifting. That feature is now available on Ultegra 2. But what is it and why do we have it? Well, the idea is to offer synchronized control over the front mech in relation to your gearing in the rear mech. So when you are in full synchro shift mode, as you shift up or down the cassette at the rear, it will change automatically and accordingly between the big and the small ring up front so that you, the rider, can simply just keep on riding and crucially staying at a similar or the same cadence. And also, as you do shift between the big and the small ring to limit that big jump or suddenly coming to a grinding slow cadence, it will adjust just marginally between the gears at the back too, just like this. If I start in the small ring and start shifting from the 28 tooth on the cassette, which is the easiest gear or the largest cog, down towards the 11 tooth, as I move to approximately the 15 tooth, the synchro shift kicks in and moves the chain up into the big ring and then also back towards the 28 tooth a little to compensate for the jump. And obviously the same happens in reverse should you hit a climb for instance. So it's kind of trying to make things easier for us and allow us literally just to focus on the riding. And Shimano actually describe it as trying to offer you the simplicity of essentially a one by 11 drivetrain but with the added gear range and choice of a 2x11 drivetrain. So in other words, you simply focus on changing the gears at the rear and the rest is taken care for you, which in theory sounds fantastic, it sounds great, but we're used to having full control of our gears. And if you're someone that likes to grind the gears at a slower cadence, or maybe spin the gears at a higher cadence, then this automatic change may not be to your liking. But you aren't stuck with this setup. There are more options for you. So the setup we've just discussed is the full synchro shift mode, which everything is taken care for you. But we also have the semi-synchro shift mode. Now personally, this is my favorite. In this instance, you do actually have control of the front mech and being able to switch between the big and the small ring. But ordinarily, when you do switch between the big and the small ring, you can end up with this jarring leap in the gears and your cadence. And suddenly you're searching for the rear gears and changing on the sprocket to adjust that. Well, in this instance, with the semi-synchro shift mode, when you do change between the big and the small ring, it automatically and simultaneously adjusts the gears at the rear by a sprocket or two to take away that jarring leak, which is very clever. And then, of course, the same happens in reverse too. But of course, if that's also not to your liking, then there is also the manual mode. This is simply the same mode that you've been used to prior to synchro shift. You have full control of both the front and the rear gears. Nothing happens automatically for you, it's all down to you. Well, I do lie very slightly because there is actually an automatic trim adjustment of the front mech, basically just ensuring that there's no chain rub, so it would just ever so slightly move, but otherwise there's no actual changing of gears. All down to you. So you're probably now asking, how do you change between these modes? Well, the key is in the junction box. You can toggle through each mode by pushing the junction A box button twice. Solid red and green lights indicate that you're in manual shift mode. Two blinks indicate you're in semi-synchro shift mode and three blinks indicate you're in full synchro shift mode. If you press the junction A box button twice again, it will cycle back to manual shift mode. And Shimano Di2 group sets pretty much all come with Synchro Shift installed as standard, including the Dura Ace R9150 and 9170, and also the Ultegra 8050. But also some older compatible group sets such as the Dura Ace 9050 and also the Ultegra 6870 also can install Synchro Shift onto them, although you may need to get a new battery for the system that basically contains the master unit, which 
basically has a higher processing power to be able to deal with the synchro shift system. So I do suggest just looking into that first before you try doing that. But also you can take this a step further and get really geeky with synchro shift and start customizing it, which I'll be honest, I've been there and I've actually really enjoyed it. It's particularly useful for TT and triathlon bikes with numerous buttons on the front end. To do this, you'll need to use the Shimano eTube app. And in that, you can completely change the shift settings. You can change where and when it changes up into the big ring or down into the small ring, depending on the gears at the back. You can change what all the buttons do and so on and so forth. To do that though, you will need the Shimano wireless receiver, which you can connect into the system wherever you like and leave it there. Or you can temporarily plug it in between the rear mech here and the cable that's currently plugged into it and then remove it when you're done with that. And you can have a lot of fun here. For it's on a triathlon bike, if, you're, if you've got two buttons on either aero pole, you can have one aero pole solely operating the front mech and then the other aero pole solely operating the rear mech, or you can have one pole operating the ups in both the front mech and the rear mech and the other pole operating the downs in both the front mech and the rear mech. Hopefully you follow that. Basically, you can have a lot of fun with this and make it essentially as intuitive as possible for you. Well, I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If so, please do give it a like. Get involved in the comments section down below. Let us know any issues you've had with electronic gears or anything you found to work really well with you. Maybe the customization through the YouTube app. Also, don't forget to check out some of our other videos on GTM. We've also have electronic gears hacks video. So do make sure you head on over and check that out. And don't forget to give us a follow over on social media and subscribe just down below.